Come, Pastor Danish. Thank you. Hi, good morning. good morning. It's such a joy to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so excited to be here uh, sharing this time with all of us. And it's always so wonderful to worship together. I'd like to, uh, first of all, congratulate uh, Pastor Thomas. He's now appointed as the senior pastor of City Missions Church. Uh, like I said, we came a long way. He was my manpower officer and in my reservist, so he is a man of power. So we just want to thank God that, you know, the Lord has anointed him with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, even as we were worshiping just now, I just saw the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I believe the Lord is going to raise us up to be mightily used by the Lord. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You have the right connections. So, so um, I was just saying that I just saw the, the vision of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and I believe the Lord is going to raise us up to be roaring for the Lord. How many of us believe that God wants us to roar for such a time as this? We need to roar with a prophetic voice. We need to roar with the uprising of the anointing of the apostolic leadership because the world is looking for answers. Can you say amen to that? The world is looking for answers. It's just like during 911. Back in the year of uh, 2001 when that happened, that weekend, the church was flooded with so many people. The people were looking for answers. But the unfortunate thing is that subsequently, the attendance dropped because the church wasn't ready to provide the answer in which we want to tell the world that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we are fighting powers of darkness, we need to rise up for such a time as this, and I believe the Lord is raising us up to be lions, to be roaring at such a time. Amen? We just want to thank God that even as we enter into 2024, that is going to be a good year. Despite whatever people say, with all the economic downturn and, and whatever, etc., 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 but when you are with the Lord, when the Lord is in all of us, it will always be good. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is good. Amen? Throughout the entire year, begin to proclaim this. It's good. It is good. Whatever may happen, even as we go through the deepest of all valleys and the darkest of all nights, we thank God that it is good. There was once a story of a king going on a hunting trip with a servant. So he told the servant, hey, uh, let's go for hunting. So the servant turned around and said, it is good. And then he went hunting, he caught many animals, they, they used bow and arrows and, and used guns and everything and killed a few animals and, and the king was so delighted and turned to the servant and said, oh, we had a good harvest today, we caught a few animals. And then, of course, the servant says, it is good. And one of the occasions in which the servant was preparing the rifle for the king to fire at the animal and accidentally the rifle, the rifle went off, boom, and then the king's finger was totally blasted and he lost his finger. He was so upset, he turned to his servant. Guess what the servant said? It is good. <laughs> so he put him into jail and he was so upset with this servant. And then he went on another hunting trip. And this time round, he was caught by cannibals. And they're supposed to eat this king up, put him in a boiling pot. And then just when they were about to do that, they found that this king has got one of his fingers missing. And they realized that they don't want to eat any human body without uh, their missing parts. So they released the king. And the king thought to himself, oh, wonderful. No wonder my servant says, what? It is good. So he was so excited, he went to the prison and says, oh, servant, oh, servant, I'm so sorry that I put you in jail. And then what do you think the servant said? It is good. Do you know why? So the servant explained to him, if I were to be with you in the same, same hunting trip, I'll be the one eaten, right? So it is good. So as you enter into 2024, we know that God is going to be with us, that all things, not just some things, not a few things, all things work together for good to those who love Him, who are called according to His purposes, that throughout the entire year, you can declare what? It is good. Amen. Can I just... Uh, Pardon me, I just want to shift this. I want to see everybody. Yeah, it is good. See anybody uh, 
taking notes or meditating. I'm sorry, I want to see everybody. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, the Lord has really laid this upon my heart to share with all of us. Let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for this time. I truly pray that every single word that I share will be from your throne, O oh God. Lord, I truly pray for each and every single one of us here. Lord, at the sound of the words, Lord, being released, your word that goes forth will not return to you void, but will accomplish your purposes. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you cover this entire place with your presence, with the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that every single word will be deposited on good ground. Lord, as a word that goes forth deposited in good ground, good soil, it will produce a crop of a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, that Lord, we are becoming more and more like you, Lord. We pray that Lord, we will not just be hear us of the word, be doers of the word as well. So bless each and every one of us here and touch us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe the Lord is leading this church to another notch, to a higher level. How many of you can say amen to that? How many of us will say that, Lord, count me in. I want to be part of what you're doing here in City Missions Church. Can you, say, can you just raise your hand and let the Lord see your hand high and lift it up. He says, Lord, I want to be part of what you are doing right here. I believe you are bringing us to a new level. You are bringing us to another notch higher. And Lord, I really want to serve you and express this service in this church, in the kingdom of God, that we see the Lord expanding and extending the kingdom of God in ways beyond our imagination over the years. The leadership has been plowing and planting, plowing and planting, and the Lord is enabling this church to see the fruits that are coming to pass. And we just want to thank God for that. And so we're going to cover this topic called Be Strong and of Good Courage. And I pray that this will be a uh, some, some, something that would lay hold of today that throughout this entire year that we'll always be reminded besides of it is good that we'll be strong and of good courage, right? So we know that God wants to do that in our lives and before we go into this I just felt that the now word for 2024 is taken from Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19 I'd just like to read for all of us Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do what? A new thing. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is doing a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me and the jackals and the ostriches because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people I formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. So the Lord is reminding us, forget about the former things. We need to start fresh. We need to understand that God is bringing us to new places. Like just uh, Pastor Lawrence was preaching on, we've never been here before. Right? We know that we are going to places unexplored, there will be uncharted waters, and we know that we're going to go with the strength, with the presence of the Lord. That's why we need to be strong and courageous. We need this power of the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us and guide us, and the Lord will show us things that we do not know of. We need to understand the Lord is doing new things in the midst of us. Another version says, shall you not perceive it? We need to open our spiritual eyes, our understanding to perceive what God is doing and to say, Lord, I'm beholding what you're doing in the midst of us. I want to be part of it. And he's going to do the impossible. Streams, rivers in the desert, roadways in the wilderness. Is it possible? With men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Can you say amen to that? With God, all things, not just some things, all things are possible. Right? I'm excited and I'm shouting. I'm not shouting at you because I just sense the presence of God. I just want to share from the depths of my heart. You know, it's like, I mean, it's a very strange, uh, what you call it, illustration. 
It's like having diarrhea after constipation. You know what I'm saying? You are, you are in gestation. You are, you're building this up. You just sense the word of God you know, being laid upon my heart. And now I'm releasing it. It's like a floodgate that comes forth. And, and I really pray that you're able to capture whatever I'm saying through your spirit. That you're able to see what God is trying to say to all of us. We know that God is a God of all possibilities. And many times we talk about wilderness, we always have a negative connotation. Oh, wilderness, uh, oh, tough loss. A sense of defeat, a sense of desperation, a sense of dryness, a sense of uh, despair, a despondency. And maybe you see vouchers flying around overhead because there's death. But if we just ask you to turn to Luke chapter 4, just to emphasize that the, the Lord is reminding us that this wilderness is something that the Lord creates and allows. In Luke chapter 4, what does it say? In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, I think this is something that really revolutionized my entire thinking and also seeing wilderness as something in which God has allowed for us to go through. In chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into where? The wilderness. Who led Jesus into the wilderness? Holy Spirit. So when the Lord puts us through this wilderness, it's a time and a season for us to grow. It's a time and a season for us to experience the power and the manifestation of God's glory in our lives. So if you're in that wilderness situation, we need to perceive that God is doing a new thing. We need to understand that God can form rivers in the desert, that God can form roadways in the wilderness. And just like in verse 14, as you read on, after going through the wilderness situation, what happens? When Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all surrounding region, and he taught in the synagogues being glorified by all. So first of all, in verse 1, he was filled with the Spirit. And verse 14, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, power. The power of the Holy Spirit, that God is going to enable us. And what is exciting, I just received this from the Lord in Matthew chapter 3. Who was crying in the wilderness? Matthew chapter 3. John the Baptist. And when he was in the wilderness, it was a situation where he was able to prophesy the word of God. It says that prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. Right? It says here. It's a fulfillment of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter something, something, you know. He was uh, talking about Isaiah and proclaiming. He says that uh, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. So the Lord just impressed this upon my heart that as we go through the wilderness situation, it's a time for the prophetic word to be released. It's a time that we prepare for the coming of the Lord. It's a time that we see God manifesting. We see the power of God being released. We see the glory of God being revealed. Amen? So we know that the wilderness situation can be a good thing because it is good. Amen? And so as we go through this entire year, may this be something that will, that will anchor on and to say, Lord, I believe that you are doing a new thing. And so throughout this entire year, like William Carey once said, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. And remember, because our God is the greatest. The last part I just add in, okay? I'm sorry, William. So we just add on this last part. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. How many of us want to attempt great things for God this year? Amen? I mean, aren't you tired of slacking and being the, the Christian that just day in, day out, you know, just go through the grind and, and there's nothing exciting, there's nothing upcoming and, and you just go through life and I tell you, time passes very quickly. It's like, the, just like yesterday I met uh, Pastor Thomas in, in reservist. I mean, after so many years, it's just like in the twinkling of an eye. And I just sometimes can't believe that things happen so fast. Sometimes I wish, you know, can you please slow down the time? 
especially when I watch my granddaughter growing up, uh, can you just remain as a little toddler? You know, I mean, you're growing so quickly, you know, and she's now five years old already. I remember the times when she was two, three, and just having all the fun time and boo boo baba, you know, all kind of stuff, and she was speaking in tongues in her own special way. And so we, we know that God is, is really causing us to rise up. I mean, before you know it, I already collected my CPF already. <laughs> if I just drag and drag and drag, before I know it, people will be choosing a casket for me. Do we want that kind of life? Do we want that kind of life? I mean, honestly, just ask yourself, do we want that kind of life? Or do we want something that is exciting? Something that we can attempt great things for God and to expect great things, you know, from God and attempt great things for God. So roadways in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And so the Lord is doing this new thing in all of us. So I believe the message to all of us, City Missions Church, only be strong and very courageous. A church that is beloved by the Lord Jesus Christ, a church that Jesus shed his blood for, redeemed by the Lord, a church that is redeemed and not forgotten, a church that is respected and not rejected. A church that is ordained and not ordinary. Appointed, not disappointed. Anointed and not neglected. A church born for such a time as this. So I'd like to encourage all of us here in City, City Missions Church. Be strong and very courageous. And I believe this is a now word for this church as you enter into this year. Joshua chapter 1. Verses 1 to 9. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all these people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And even as we see this, we're going to unpack this. We're going to do a bit of uh, exposition on this nine verses, right? And we just want to go through and to see what is the Lord saying to all of us. First of all, we see the passing of the mantle. The Lord calls different people for different times and seasons. God has his times and his seasons, and he makes all things beautiful in its time. Right? God has got different times and seasons for all of us. As we see in God's time, you have the Kronos time, which is the general time that is happening, or the Kairos time for a specific time, for an opportune time in which we can fulfill what God has called us to do. So like Moses and Joshua, right? So the Lord is reminding Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. I mean, don't you think Joshua doesn't know that his servant Moses is dead? Probably he did the funeral and said the eulogy and everything and said the last prayer. I mean, 
he, he's going to be reminded that this is a new season in which you are entering into. Moses was called for different purposes. Moses was called for his responsibilities, his roles, and the things that he is supposed to do as the leader in leading the entire nation out of bondage. And just before entering into the promised land, the Lord has passed this mantle on to Joshua. Because all of them have got different roles and responsibilities. Not that Joshua is more spiritual than Moses, but God is actually calling different people for different things. And so evidently, we see God's work here in City Missions Church. How many of you can say amen to that? We see God's work here in City Missions Church. You know, we see God's success in this church, right? Not many churches actually own buildings. Amen? But this church does. And we know that God is calling this church for a lot of missions work. We see a number of foreign partners that we've seen how the Lord has laid and built the foundation here. And we know that God has doing great things. You know, sometimes, you know what is unfortunate? The unfortunate thing is that when we see things changing, they tear down whatever has been built up. For example, some churches where they have a change in pastors, where a pastor is being transferred because they go on rotation. And I've seen it happening. that The new pastor comes in, whatever the previous pastor has built up, everything is torn down and to start afresh again. And then it goes in a vicious cycle. I think we need to be wiser than that. We need to build upon one another's or whatever has been laid, so that we can build higher and stronger and higher and stronger and higher and stronger to see God enabling us to fulfill all that He has for this church. Amen? And just like Emerson has said, as to methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grabs principle can successfully select his own methods. We know that all the principles have got to remain, but the methodology may change. So what I'm encouraging this church is that we build layer upon layer the foundation and then we build the structure and we build higher and higher and higher because we are not building a monument unto ourselves. We are building the kingdom of God. Amen? We are building the, the God's work and God's church and we know that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So we know that Moses actually represented a different generation. So we need to build on the foundation that's being laid. So we just want to see for a moment, why was Joshua chosen? The person. So in this little passage, they have a few Ps. The first of all is the passing on of the mantle. The next one is the person. And then we'll go on to the other Ps later on, right? So we need to mind our P's and Q's when I'm speaking. Okay, so anyway, so why was Joshua chosen? I believe the first thing is that he's a man of tenacity. And he's got a spirit of a warrior. How many of you have got a spirit of a warrior? Unfortunately, sometimes we have the spirit of a warrior rather than a warrior. We worry about this, we worry about that. And in the pastoral counseling situation, some people are worried that they have, don't, don't have worries. You know what I'm saying? They are worried because, hey, got no worry. So I'm quite worried about that. You know? Is there something wrong? You know? So he's got this tenacity. He's a warrior. We see this in Exodus chapter 17, verse 13. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with what? The sword. Now, how does this apply to us today? Joshua overcame the Amalekites with the sword, and God is raising you and me up today with the wielding of the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. The Lord wants us to understand how we can employ this double-edged sword for both offensive and defensive as well. And so we are raising a generation that will wield the sword in the mighty army of God. This is the sword they were talking about. With the high praises of God in the mouth and a two-edged sword in our hands, it will march into the land to accomplish whatever God has promised to us. How well do we know the sword of the Spirit? How well do we know that we can use the Word of God? You know, the enemy comes 
with the twisting of his word. We see this evidently in the three temptations of Jesus Christ. And he was challenged, Jesus was challenged by the enemy, the devil, which is Satan, using the word, but twisted. But Jesus was able to overcome by the word. And we need to understand that God wants us to really build our lives upon the word of God. Because it's something that will never perish. Everything will perish away, but the word of God will remain forever. Amen. So we need the word of God. Tell the neighbor, he says, you need the word of God. I need it too. We need the Word of God. I, I really want to grow in the Word of God. I really want to grow in the knowledge and understanding. It's not just knowing, but the application of God's Word. When the Lord says, don't worry, I don't worry. Not just knowing and hate knowledge, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. But when worry comes, we get worried. Don't be anxious. And then we get full of anxiety attacks and everything. So we need to overcome by the application of the Word. The second thing is His spirituality. First, we see his tenacity. The second is his spirituality. You see this in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. It says, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. In other words, after Moses has done everything in the tabernacle, when he left and go back to his camp, his assistant by the name of Joshua remains there in the tabernacle. What does that mean? It means that there's such a passion, there's such a hunger, there's such a desire for the presence of God. How many of us have got a hunger for the Lord? That we really want to be in the presence, that we want to spend time praying, not just to do it in a very ritualistic way, not to do it as some kind of a religious thing that, you know, I pray three times a day, before breakfast, before lunch, and before dinner. I'm not talking about a kind of a prayer. How many of us try to spend one entire hour speaking in the tongues? I tell you, it's tough. If you are doing it just religiously, ritualistically, I tried. I pray until house is gone. You know, no more saliva. Oh, three minutes only. <laughs> Another 57 minutes to go. Oh my goodness. But when you are in the presence, when you enjoy the intimacy, that you enjoy the relationship, you talk and you pray, you, you pray, you just time goes so quickly. You don't feel the time. When you are with your loved one, do you, do you drag the time? Hey, oh, five minutes. Hey, faster, faster. No, we spend time, we enjoy the presence of God. So he was in the presence of God. You know, he would remain behind. It speaks of his passion and his devotion, right? Another version translated as would not leave the inside of the tent, right? So we see his heart, we see his, and also he was one that is full of the Spirit of God and he has a different spirit, just him and Caleb. So just like the 12 spies that were sent, who are the 12 spies? Joshua, Caleb, and 10 others. Their names are all there. Why we can't remember their names, the rest of the ten? Because it is not important. And don't you think it's so true in life that people remember those people who are of significance, of importance, those that have touched other people's lives and remember their names, but those that just come and go, we don't remember their names. There are ten of other spies, the names are all there, but we don't know their names. We don't even want to remember. We see this in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. And we see, you know, they have a different spirit, Joshua and Caleb. They are totally different because when they went into this, this land to spy the land, those 10 other spies saw themselves as like grasshoppers. They saw the giants. But for Caleb and Joshua, they have a different spirit. Do we have a different spirit today? That we have the spirit of the Lord instead of the spirit of the world, that we are seeking after the worldly pleasures, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You know, it makes us very, very different if we have the spirit of the Lord in all of us. So the second P is the promise that God gave. We see from this passage, the parameters in which God gave is very clear and certain. From the wilderness... And this Lebanon, we see this in verse 3. You can go back and read through. I think I'm running out of time. 
I think 12 o'clock got to finish, right? So, so we, we, we need to understand that there are parameters in which God is giving to us. You know, sometimes when we see parameters, we see, oh, we are so bound by parameters. But how we must know that when parameters are given, it gives us the freedom that we can operate within the parameters in which we can enjoy. When God restricts us, it doesn't mean that God is a killjoy. When we restrict our kid from running from this end to the other end in a car park, it doesn't mean that we are trying to stop them from enjoying themselves in terms of running. If they give them a perimeter in a playground where you are surrounded by a fence and you can play within that, there's so much freedom in which the kid can enjoy. Don't you think it's so true, even for our own lives, that God limits us and put parameters, not because it's a killjoy, because He wants to protect us. He wants to keep us from harm and from danger. And the Lord, when He revealed this, He says, look, this is what you've been given, the parameters. And I see this so positively, because when I have this parameter, it doesn't cause me to be greedy. It doesn't cause me to be complacent. I can be so free in achieving whatever God has given to me. We see this in verse 4. What does verse 4 say? From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, right? So we see this, that God wants us to understand. He didn't promise them the whole world, but enough to be so happy in receiving all these. Something that is realistic, something that is doable, something that is achievable, something that is clear and certain. And we see also His protection, that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Isn't this enough? That we have this protection from the Lord, this assurance from the Lord that every enemy that we encounter, every battle that we fight, God is going to enable us to overcome because no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. So we know that this is the assurance that God has given to us. And when the Lord Jesus was born, His name was given what name did, did they give to him? There are two names, right? One is Jesus, right? Which is Jehovah saves. And the other one is Emmanuel. The Lord is with us. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. And this is one of the greatest assurance that God can give to all of us. That he will not leave us nor forsake us. He won't leave us as orphans. He will not leave us without us having to hold his hand and to walk through this journey of life. Praise be to God. I'm so thankful that God is always, always, always with us. <clears throat> and so this is the promise that God has given to you and to me. So what is the promise that God has given to City Missions Church? What do you think? I've been working here for some time, long time ago, and from seeing from an outside perspective, we see CMC as a missional church. Someone mentioned that just now a marketplace church, an intergenerational church, a praying church, a prophetic church. And this is very important. It's a continuous makan church. CMC. Okay. Very important. Jesus spent a lot of time eating. That's why I want to be Christ-like. So I want to eat a lot with people also. So I like to sleep a lot also. Do you know why? <clears throat> so that I can live my dreams. Okay. So we know that God has given this promise and He's given us parameters and to show us His protection. How can we be assured of success? We need to understand that God has all these planned out for the children of Israel and God has all these planned out for you and for me. He has a strategy. He has got a blueprint for all of us. He's really given us a manual. And what is the manual? The owner's manual is called the Bible. He's given us this Bible for us to understand how then we can live our lives. In every product that we buy, especially electrical products, you always have an owner's manual. How, of us, how many of us never read the manual? I'm one of them. I don't read the manual until I get into trouble. 
right? It's like Ikea. How many of us like to buy Ikea furniture and fix it? And Odo says, get so excited fixing all the shelves and everything. Not following the manual, you know, Ge Kiang, no? So I try to fix it myself. Then after, hey, how come got so many other parts remaining? Eh? And I used to think, I was so foolish, I used to think to myself, I think IKEA is very kind. They give us extra, you know, just in case we lose some. Until I go back to the manual and say, oh no, it's the wrong way. This is supposed to be there and, you know, the, all the missing parts, all the, the remaining parts are supposed to be in that as well. And so, we don't read instructions. So we need to understand the plan. The plan has already been given to us. It says in this passage, the word has been given to all of us. We can only be successful, we can be assured of success when we meditate on this passage or the, the book of the Lord. Let's look at verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate in it day and night. They may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. You know, when we see, when the Lord reminds us, of course, those days was only five books. The first five books of the Bible, which is the Old Testament. Whereas nowadays, how many books do we have? We have 66 books, right? 66 books, clear and precise instructions how to live our lives. What kind of person we should marry, how to do our business, how we just conduct ourselves, and etc., etc. And so verse 8 tells us we have to meditate and we do not allow this word to depart from our mouth. What does that mean? It means that we have to have the word of God so close to us. So close to us that we keep muttering and muttering and muttering and muttering and, and we need to keep proclaiming and reading and declaring and decreeing and keep speaking the word of God. That's why the Bible tells us in, in Paul's letter, it says, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The Lord warned us against, you know, refrain from idle talk and silly talk and gossips and everything. There is this writer that really touched my heart and influenced my philosophy of ministry very much. It's by the name of Henry Newen. He's actually a Catholic priest. And he says that, what is fellowship? Fellowship is defined as when you, after the meeting of being together, we see the Christ in each one of us. Don't you think that's awesome? That's what fellowship is all about. That we build up, we don't tear down. That we can continue to encourage and not discourage Instead of gossiping, we just share the gospel of the good news of the Lord. And this word meditate, its original language is called haga. In other words, you keep muttering. You keep muttering the word of God under your breath. It's just like wherever you go, you just can pick up a verse and say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And suddenly you have a, a something that is a trouble. And what do we do? We panic. But haven't we been saying rejoice in the Lord always? Always, not just sometimes, but always. So it says, what is required is that observe to do. Now, what does that mean? Observe to do. It means you have to apply. Apply. Tell your neighbor, apply. You have to apply the word of God. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. In other words, don't be swayed. Don't be distracted. You need to just focus. You need to just Really look at it and not be double-minded. Don't be distracted. Don't lose your focus. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. You know, the Bible tells us that the five-fold ministry is to build up the body of Christ so that they will no longer be tossed about by every wind of doctrine. They will grow in maturity to be more and more like Jesus. And I think this is something all of us need to understand, that God has called all of us to grow. We don't want to be stagnant. We don't want to be just remaining the same. Some of us can be a long-time Christian, many years in church, but only just one year in terms of our experience, in terms of our discipleship, in terms of following Jesus. Let's grow in the Lord. And what is the result? In everything that we do, we'll prosper. What does it say? For then you make your way prosperous, and then you have good, Success. How many of us want good success? If there's good success, it simply means there's bad success. 
at the expense of your life, expense of your family, expense of your time. You know, I mean, some of us may have come across this where the kid asked the father, you know, how much do you make per hour? I mean, how much does it cost, you know, to have one hour of your time? And he says, $100. And so the kid says, can I borrow $50 because I have $50 and I want to buy $100 of your time? I mean, don't be a parent like that. So whatever we do, as we meditate upon the Word of God, as we apply the Word of God, as we observe the Word of God, we will continue to grow in the Word of God and have good success. So this plan is the plan in which God has given to us. And every place that your soul would tread upon, what does this mean? It simply means our participation. There's no time for bystanders. There's no time for people to sit by the side and to watch what's happening in church. It's time for us to roll up our sleeves and put our hands onto the plow and say, Lord, I want to be part of what you're doing here. As we enter into 2024, I want to be in the thick of it. You know, whatever it takes, whatever it, that I, I'm, I'm supposed to do, I'll do it. I always tell people when I first came to church, I started serving the Lord as a chairman. I was stacking chairs in church. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of... Uh, Delay laughter. Good thing it wasn't tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes I tell jokes, people laugh tomorrow. So we, we know that God has given all of us a role that we can participate. So begin to say, Lord, I want to be part of what you're doing. So we know that the most important of all is throughout this entire journey, we need the presence of God. We need to be strong. It's actually a command that has been given to us like Moses, he was saying, unless you go with me, Lord, I will not be wanting to go because I can't go by my own strength. I can't go by my own ability. I need you, Lord, to be with me. If you're not with me, don't send me. I'm sure all of us have been to a dark place where you're all by yourself and all your imaginations run wild and you don't know what's behind everything and, and there's so much fear. But when you are with someone who's stronger, wiser, has got really the understanding of that place, you are so comforted because you know that this person can guide you and lead you and that is who God is. We know that at least three times in this passage, in fact four, if we consider the whole chapter, God has to remind them, be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and very courageous. Be strong and of good courage. And the last one in the last verse, only be strong and of good courage. Why God has to repeat himself over and over and over and over again? Simply because this person by the name of Joshua was fearful. He was going to enter in. And perhaps, you know, there's this playback, you know, the giants that were there. All the different enemies that he has to face. Then all the challenges, the different terrains and, and all the different things that he is up against. And all of a sudden, you get frozen. It's like some people jumping off the bungee jump and suddenly they just get freaked out. And so God has to remind Joshua, be strong, have good courage. Be strong, have good courage. You know, this is written as a command. It's written in the imperative. As you read the Bible, there are some things which is a verb. It's written as a command. It's in the imperative. In other words, it's not a suggestion. It's not a consideration. Or perhaps you can think about it. It's not some kind of a simple kind of a suggestion that he's putting on. It's a command in which God is saying, be strong and have good courage. We need to understand that there are times we are fearful. When we go through this entire year, sometimes we do not know what's going to be like. So we need the assurance from the Lord. So do not be afraid nor dismayed. Our minds can play tricks on us, but we can just assure, be assured that the uh, confidence is in the Lord. The Lord is with you as I was with Moses. I'm sure Joshua by now have seen the life of Moses, have seen how the Lord has been with Moses all these while. And so we know that God is assuring Joshua. So the Lord is assuring us, be strong and of good courage. We may see the passing of the mantle as we see in Joshua chapter 1. But we are reminded of the promise. We are reminded of the person in which God is raising up that every one of us can be that person the plan, the presence, 
as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Amen. Jun Jun, 12 o'clock. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this time. We pray that your Holy Spirit will just minister, Lord. I believe the Lord is speaking to each one of us. And today you are saying, you know, Dennis, I, I'm from City Missions Church. I really want to be part of what the Lord is doing here. And the Lord is just putting this desire in your heart. With every head bowed and every eye closed. And you see, Pastor Dan, just pray for me. Just raise your right hand up. I'd like to pray especially for you. God bless you. Is there anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just raise your hand. Just leave it to the Lord and say, Lord, see my hand. See my hand. I'm lifting them up to you. Count me in, Lord. Count me in. I want to be part of what you are doing here. I just want to serve you. I want to be counted, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just allow the Holy Spirit to just minister to you. The Lord is raising up the Joshua's of today. The Lord is raising up men with and women with tenacity. The Lord is looking at our spirituality, the hunger and desire of more and more of Him. The Lord is looking for people with a different spirit. That you say, Lord, I don't want to have the spirit of the world. I want to have your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Touch me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Lord, I can do something for you, Lord. The Bible says, even as you offer a cup of water in His name, you will be rewarded. Whatever it may be, there will be so many opportunities here in this church. Just raise your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, Count me in, Lord. I want to be in the army of God. I want to be that voice. I want to be used by you, Lord. Is there anybody else? Just leave your hands up. Just leave it there and just let the Lord see your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just want to thank you for my dear brothers and sisters. I pray they continue to bless them. Lord, as these hands are being raised to you, not only you see our hands, but you see our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray that, Lord, even as they are indicating this to you, Lord, I pray that, Lord, that you receive them and, Lord, that you raise them up to be the mighty Joshua's of today. Joshua's with a tenacity that we wield the sword that we will have a strong spirituality, that we have a hunger and thirst for you, and we have a different spirit, not the worldly spirit of God. And Father, you're going to reveal the plan to us, which is your word, that we want to observe and to apply, to do whatever that is written. We pray that you help us, oh God. Lord, we pray that you just enable us, reminding us of the promises, that Lord, the parameters that you have set, the protection that you provide. So Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that Lord, even as we serve you in the kingdom that you have called us into, we know, Lord, that we can serve a faithful God, a faithful master, a faithful almighty God. We just want to thank you. It's such a privilege. Lord, we know we are all called differently. We are all made up differently. We are all wired differently. There are different things that we can do. We can offer our gifts, our talents to you. Lord, we just want to be used by you, Lord. So bless, Lord. We pray for this church that we know that they are at a threshold of great and exciting things. Lord, we pray they continue to manifest your strategies, your blueprint, your heartbeat even to this church. That this church will grow up another level, they're up another notch. They do even greater mighty things for you, Lord. That, Lord, foundations that have been built will, be, will, be, will continue to be built upon. And, Lord, we see the structures. We see the different things that are being formed here, Lord. Because, Lord, this is done unto your glory. We just want to give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' glorious name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen.